Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm recording this on September 1st. This is the episode talking about impacts. I'll also do another one on what's going on in the Middle East. So please make sure you subscribe to all my channels. I have four channels on YouTube. I have Bright John, BitChute, and Rumble. You can also follow me on X, Facebook, and Getter. That way you stay abreast with my content. video announcements, all this stuff, all right? It's really important that you subscribe to all seven channels. Some things I can't say on YouTube, while other things I can, so it's really important that you participate also in the premieres. So please subscribe to all my channels. In addition, please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. You can help support my free videos by donating. You can donate through my website or you can be a paid member on Patreon. That donation and membership helps to support the free content that I provide. I provide thousands of videos that are for free. Thousands. All right. So please go to my store, the-studio-rakevic.com. And on my homepage, at the very bottom, you can donate through Stripe, PayPal, or Buy Me a Coffee or you can be a paid member to Patreon. My channel link is in the description of this video and all my videos, and you can be a paid member that way. Higher tiered members on Patreon will also have a certain level of access to my pulmonology lectures and my immunology lectures. So please be a paid member on Patreon or donate through my website through Stripe, PayPal, or buy me a coffee. That way, you're helping support the content that I do. That's for free. Thank you for, for your patronage and, uh, and your continued support. I do appreciate it. Before we go to the Impox videos that we're going to be talking about, it's really important to, to, to understand that uh, we're going to be bombarded by many pathogens during this cold season. It's going to be RSV. It's going to be SARS-CoV-2. Influent, different influenzas, there's going to be the impox issue, there's going to be the problems with West Nile and Triple E, which is Eastern equine encephalitis. Uh, there's maybe a few more that pop up, who knows. But, but the thing is, is that we're going to be bombarded. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to get something, but our immune systems have been weakened through the 2020 crisis. And, and for some people, it's healing. For others, they still have a problem with their immune system. We know through just common sense that a good immune system can fight cancer. A bad immune system uh, can't fight cancer very well. So it's really important to boost up your immune system. In addition, if you have a weakened immune system, you're gonna be more susceptible to pathogens. There's also a group of people out there from the 2020 crisis in the aftershock where their immune system is, is too active. It's, it, there's an autoimmune disorder where their antibodies, their immune system is attacking their, their body. Uh, so you have to you know, be mindful of that too. And there's another cohort of people that are okay. So it's not a cookie cutter. If anyone says that the crisis that we went through in 2020 is cookie cutter, they don't know what they're talking about. There are different groups. There is a okay group. There is a there is a um, uh, autoimmune group, and there is a a an immune system group where it's deficient to some. And there's different degrees of deficiency within that group. And when I say you know okay, the okay group, that can be subdivided in. They didn't get a pathogen, nor did they get an inoculation. Some of them that are in the okay group did get a inoculation or fine. Some uh, didn't get an inoculation and did get the pathogen and are fine. Some uh, did get an uh, inoculation, wait, didn't, did get an inoculation and didn't get a pathogen and they are fine. So there are different groups, all right, within these main subgroups. All right, so if anyone says that 
all of one particular category, this is what happens, you're not paying attention to the data. That's not what the data says. So please be mindful that in the 2020 crisis, you have all these different subgroups, the ones that have an autoimmune disorder for various reasons, ones that have a deficient immune system for various reasons, and ones that are okay for various reasons, right? It's not a cookie cutter approach. Very important to understand that, all right? But for the ones that are gonna have these weakened immune systems, all right, and there are many, all right, we, uh, we are going to start seeing people con being contracting pathogens at a, at a higher rate, at a higher incidence. All right. And we're going to have to just take our health in our own hands. And that is boosting up your immune system, eating right, exercising properly. You know, it's, it, it's a lifestyle change. You have to learn from what the longevity as experts have done and how do you apply it to yourself to be able to boost up your immune system, how to improve your health. And it's a multi-pronged approach. It's about proper diet, proper exercise, proper supplementation, proper sleep. You need to stretch. You need to do balance exercises. You don't have to get too crazy about this, but some, some, anaerobic training, so weight training, some cardiovascular training, so some aerobic training, some balancing exercises, which is a little bit of yoga and stretching, right? You don't have to get too crazy, but a little bit each day. It's really important. Proper sleep is really important. And you need to also uh, have mindfulness, all right? And that's either through meditation or, or spirituality, all right, and tra challenge your brain. You have to exercise your brain. That means reading and writing and talking to the real world, not cyber world, not on social, not on social media, but talking to real people, all right? There are gonna be many benefits when, when you do that, all right? For example, facial expressions and being able to read facial expressions and giving facial expressions are really important as part of just being human and being social, but also the men mental, it, it adds a, another dimension of, of, of mental acuity compared to a very one dimensional kind of situation when you're just conversing through text messages or something like that, you lose that, that social facial expression. It's really important, right? What you'll notice is that people, especially after the 2020 crisis, have um, had the, uh, the problem with actually talking to people in a social setting, right? This is kind of like, it's just starting to emerge where people are having problems looking at people in the eye. People are having problems um, introducing themselves properly or wanting to be in a crowd or whatever, all right? And you have to break that. You have to break some of that, that psychological crutch that has developed through technology and especially through the, the crisis of 2020. That's an important feature. There are some people, especially younger individuals, that are having problems actually socializing in the real world now uh, and communicating in the world, real world. Um, so just keep that in mind. So. Let's play a video by uh, DW on MPOX. We are going to stay in Africa now and then talk about the fight to contain the outbreak of MPOX on the continent, one that has sparked a global health emergency. The WHO says the first delivery of vaccines is expected to arrive in the Democratic Republic of Congo in the next few days. It's dealing with a new strain of the virus that has spread across parts of the continent. And we also have cases being reported outside of Africa. The new MPOX strain is spreading and changing fast. 
The virus is morphing in areas where experts lack the funding and equipment to properly track it, meaning there are several unknowns about its severity and how it's transmitting. The new strain, Clade 1b, was first identified in April in samples collected from a gold mining town in the Democratic Republic of Congo's South Kivu province. It is potentially more lethal than the Mpox outbreak in 2022, which was driven primarily by male-to-male -male sexual contact. The Clade 1b strain can be transmitted through any kind of physical contact or contaminated material. The crowded conditions of Congo's refugee camps have caused the virus to spread rapidly. On August 13th, Mpox was declared a public health emergency in Africa. Just a day later, the WHO released this statement. Today, the emergency committee met and advised me that in its view, the situation constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. The WHO said, The all new GMC Acadia goes big on technology, so you can go big on adventure. The WHO says that Congo now has over 18,000 cases and over 600 have died as a result of MPOX this year. At now least 12 countries across 18, Africa. 18,000 cases. That's a lot in one year. In one area. All right. So it's a problem. To think that this is not a problem, you're not paying attention. All right. In addition, in developed nations, like I said, if it if an outbreak happens in a developed nation, we do not have antibodies and the antiviral ther therapies don't work. Let me repeat, antiviral therapies don't work for MPOX. There's no treatment. Let me repeat, there is no treatment for MPOX. Nothing works that has high efficacy. So if an outbreak does happen, it's gonna be problematic in a developed nation. In addition, the antibodies that people may have had from smallpox vaccinations, when we had smallpox vaccinations for the baby boomers or immigrants that were coming to these developed nations like the United States, all right, they have, they, they had antibodies, but if they were really young when they had the smallpox vaccination, chances are they're cro that the memory cells for, for them aren't as robust, if existent at all, for an Mpox outbreak. So most of Gen X and younger in the United States don't have antibodies for cross cross reactive antibodies for smallpox or mpox. So, if an outbreak happens in developed nations, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. Now, if someone was in the military, they would have had vaccinations. And they might have some memory because they're a little older when they're in the in the military in their twenties, right? Or maybe you know, nineteen years old or so, right? So maybe they might have had, you know, they have cr cross reactivity. New immigrants coming to the United States, they would have, some, you know, some some uh, cross reactivity. But that cohort group coming out of the baby boom generation that were inoculated when they were young. Chances are your cross reactivity is gone now. All right, because you're talking uh, 60, 70 years ago. So it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. Now, there is, as of right now, I haven't seen a major outbreak in developed nations. It's only in, un it's only in underdeveloped nations or developing nations. So that's a good thing. But we can potentially see an outbreak emerging in developed nations. And when that does happen, 
you're going to start seeing people with pox. You're going to start seeing people scarred. You're going to have uh, potentially higher deaths. And obviously there's going to be some sort of uh, government intrusion on civil liberties trying to contain the outbreak. So it's multifaceted. If it, if it's a big if, but if the outbreak starts to happen now, I think that the outbreak in a developed nation is about 20% chance. So 80% chance it won't happen. But there's a 20% chance that it will. Registered a spike in cases of the virus. Sweden was the first country outside of Africa to record a case of the claimed 1B variant from a person who had traveled to an affected area of Africa. Children have been disproportionately affected by this outbreak, accounting for approximately 70% of cases in Congo. You see children in the IDP camp, they are always playing together. So they have time together. They don't really care about the distance, social distance. They don't care about that. So they play together. They are always, they are always together. And you can also see, like in in, in the household, they even pass the night on the on the same bed. Children, as well as pregnant women and those with weakened immune systems, are more likely to suffer severe symptoms and die. Children who contract the disease are more than twice as likely to die than adults. The Congolese government hopes to start vaccinations soon, with children first in line, but the arrival of shots has been slow. Efforts to contain this disease are becoming increasingly more difficult. Well, I'm joined now by the epidemiologist and health economist Eric Feigl. Being Eric is co-founder of the World Health Network, which was created during the COVID pandemic. He joins me now from Washington, D.C., Eric, it's good to see you again. So the WHO says that about 230,000 impox vaccines are ready to be shipped to the DRC to get things going in, in a couple of days. I mean, is that the solution? We've got a vaccine, do the vaccinations, and we will solve this problem. Well, I think it's definitely the key part of the solution. The only problem is that WHO, while you're shipping and allowing countries to buy the vaccine and donate it, to the DRC has not actually formally approved the vaccine yet. And so the vaccine's approved by Europe and at the US FDA, but the WHO still needs the two more weeks to actually approve it, uh, they're thinking. But that said, many countries, including um, Spain, Japan, have already pledged uh, hundreds of thousands and, and millions of doses, but we still have to get the shots into arms, so to speak. And again, the deployment of this will still take a lot of time. So I think overall we need probably about 10 million doses for Africa. And we haven't even scratched the surface of that right now. What about people who were vaccinated two years ago when there was another outbreak of impox? Do they have protection and immunity from this latest strain? Well, first of all, the vaccine is the same vaccine. Okay. Uh, the the Genius vaccine made by the Bavarian uh, Nordic is the main vaccine. And there's also another one uh, made in Japan, which is also uh, can be used in children. The, the vaccines actually have formulas that have not uh, changed. We were already we're just pulling these vaccines off the shelf for the previous, because originally they were designed for smallpox, but they also work against monkeypox. And just today, U.S. approved another one of the older smallpox vaccine, the ACAM uh, vaccine for this, if necessary, even though ACAM is a little more severe in its symptoms. It's, there is a stockpile of these vaccines. The issue is, will the WHO approve um, them soon enough? Mm -hmm. And you know, the deployment is the greater issue because this strain is definitely much more transmissible than the one we had two years ago. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, the, on a, you know, the danger level here of this new strain, where would you where would you place it in, in terms of, you know, the impacts that we already know? Higher. Yeah, the previous impacts was definitely much more sexually transmitted in predominance and close, uh, close contact, not necessarily just, uh, you know, uh, STD fluids per se. 
But right now, uh, the seventy percent of the cases are in children, um, and that clearly shows that it's it's clearly much more transmissible. It's not just sexually uh, uh, transmis transmission requirement. And I think it, they don't actually know the details of transmission. They don't know exactly the, what the mechanism is, but we think it's close contact. And possibly there's an open debate about um, airborne aerosol droplet spread as well. So right now they're being, they're investigating this it is definitely much more transmissible. The severity according to WHO currently is about 3.5% mortality. It may not be that high because we're missing a lot of undiagnosed cases in Africa, mm -hmm. but it's still definitely not Please watch my video that I did the overview for impacts, but in that video, I have a PowerPoint that shows details of what's going on with impacts. All right. Maybe I need to do another one, but the thing is, is go and watch that video. It's called impacts detail overview. And there's a protein in clade one that is expressed called D14 and D14 inhibits the complement cascade. And by inhibiting that, it allows for the virus to live in the body, all right? And prevent the body from killing off the infected cells. So it's really important to understand that there is a, a protein that is expressed that inhibits the body from clearing the infection. That protein is called D14 for clade 1A or B. Now, clade 1B is more severe than clade 1A, all right? And this is the reason why it's more problematic than the outbreaks that we were having in 2022, right? Because most of those were clade 2B, and that doesn't express D14. But D14 is expressed with this new outbreak, which is clade 1B. All right, so that's that's an important feature to you know keep in mind here. All right, it's that certain genes for the the MPOX it are expressed for different clades, and if that particular gene is expressed for for MPOX, then you're inhibiting the body from clearing the infection. And that's that's part of the reason why. All right. So please go to my store, the-studio-regulate.com. It's important that you get the, the silver gel. All right. This is a structural nano silver gel. It's a dual purpose product. You put it on your hands. You can put it around your face, um, you know, around your mouth, around your nose, around your ears, around your eyes, right? Lightly coat your nostrils. It creates a barrier on your skin, but it also protects the mucosal lining in your epithelial uh, cells um, in your nostrils, but it also neutralizes pathogens, all right? And it's creating a barrier, but it's also, it's creating a barrier, so it's helping to try to protect your skin, but it's also neutralizing pathogens, really important, all right? You should be doing that um, every day when you're in a situation like this, and you're going into the cold season. But if you put this on a cut, an abrasion, a minor burn, it'll help to heal that. It will also, you can use it as a skincare. So you can apply it on your skin every day, you know, put it on. A lot of people, what they do is they put it on before they go to bed and then, and then exfoliate in the morning. And then that's their kind of daily skincare routine. There's many ways to use it. But the point here is, is that structural nano silver gel is a high quality product that you should be thinking about using when going through this crisis and going through the, the potential higher incidences uh, during the cold season, all right? Because I think that the cold season is gonna be a little bit more problematic than, than other years. In addition, the moment you start feeling some sort of irritation, all right? Take the drops or the lozenges. I have three types of drops. I have blueberry drops. 100 count cherry drops in a 100 count and honey and lemon in a 100 count, all right? I also have elderberry, zinc, lozenges in a 21 count. 
and I have my Nuka honey lozenges in a 21 count. The moment you feel that irritation in your throat, take a lot, take the lozenges or the drops. They'll create a secretion. It'll neutralize that, that pathogen or irritant. And it's maintaining the mucosal barrier, maintaining the mucosal lining. So you're not um, perturbing your epithelial lining, all right? What that basically means is, is that maintaining a barrier prevents pathogens from getting into your system. If you're chronically sick or you have irritation or whatever, and that mucosal lining is perturbed or, or, or compromised, your chances of getting pathogens are much higher. So it's really important to take lozenges. The moment you start getting some sort of irritant, or right, you start feeling a little tingle in your throat or ir irritation, chemical irritation or pathogenic irritation or some sort of particle irritation, antigen irritation, whatever it is, take the lozenges and, and neutralize that, that, that irritant and that pathogen and maintain that barrier in your, in your oral cavity. Really important. So get a couple bags of, of these for your house, all right? And that way, once you need what, once you need it, it's there for you. Bam! You take it, and you're you're mitigating the problem. Please go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com, and get the drops and the lozenges. Mild illness, mm -hmm. and there is serious mortality, especially among vulnerable children. There are majority of the cases. The WHO has issued an emergency appeal to fund an impacts global strategic preparedness and response plan, to basically to stop transmission of, of this virus. What should a global plan include? Well, I think a lot of part of their global plan includes a funding for the 10 million doses that the WHO has called for. And we're, again, we're not even scratching the surface at 10 million. Um, they're asking countries, other countries to donate these funds. And also this, uh, to afford the, these companies to cut the prices, because currently the prices are 70 to to $100 for these vaccines. And that's just not sustainable for, you know, Africa. And I think right now, ramping up production, trying to get permission from these companies to have the tech transfer to produce these vaccines in a more efficiently in lower cost settings and of course the ramp up and getting more countries to contribute. I think altogether they're part of their global uh, you know, strategy, but right now they're, they haven't even scratched the surface. Epidemiologist Eric Feigelding from Washington, D.C. Eric, it's always good to see you. We appreciate your valuable input in this story. Thank you. All right, so let's go to a new video here. All right, um, this is Reuters. Trains. Trains that sense what is it? The Republic of the Congo continue to fight a surge in Mpox cases as they await the arrival of vaccines in the next few days. The World Health Organization said on Friday that 230,000 doses are immediately available to be dispatched. They were donated by the European Commission and Danish Mpox vaccine manufacturer Bavarian Nordic. Dr. Jose Polulu, head of the MPOC Center at Viana, said the people being treated here are those with severe or critical cases. He detailed how MPOC can lead to serious complications if not attended to, including genital lesions. Despite the push for vaccination, some patients like Blaise McKenzie are hesitant about being inoculated. What will it do to my body? Something I don't know. Because with COVID-19, we saw that some people refused the vaccine. Some accepted the COVID-19 vaccine and others refused because they had other problems afterward. So with this vaccine, we need a clear explanation of its role in our body. If it will really help us, we will accept it. We are sick. Earlier this month, the WHO declared MPOX a global public health emergency. More than 18,000 suspected cases of MPOX have been reported in Congo so far this year. The viral infection has now spread to at least 12 neighbouring countries. MPOX had been circulating in the DRC since January last year, 
but only became a grave concern this January when scientists spotted a worrying new mutation. All right, now what exactly that mutation is, I don't know, and I need to dive into that. Um, this is the BBC. The infectious disease Mpox has been declared a public health emergency of international concern by the World Health Organization. The disease, formerly known as monkeypox, has spread rapidly across Central and East Africa since the start of the year. The initial outbreak was in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has now registered 15,600 cases since the start of the year and more than 500 deaths. Health officials say the new strain of Mpox may be the most deadly yet. Joey with reports. It starts with flu-like symptoms and ends with this. This is what Mpox, which used to be called monkeypox, can do. Here in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the virus is common, but it's spreading. It's transmitted by physical contact or through the air. Five-year-old Sondrine has now recovered, but it was a terrifying moment for her mum. She had a high fever and then she started to get lesions on her body. She had rashes on her arms, on her abdomen and even on her tongue. I've been told it was a serious illness that could kill her, so I took her to the hospital. Although it can be sexually transmitted, in the crowded camps of the Eastern DRC, most of the patients are children. So far, we have 130 suspected cases, and half of them under five. Just 5% are adults. The most common way to get infected is direct contact from a sick person. And in the camps, children, they play together. The latest outbreak has killed 450 people in the DRC. It seems a new variant, called Clade 1B, is more virulent and more dangerous. And it's now been detected in neighbouring countries, including Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda and the Central African Republic. And so the World Health Organization has declared a global health emergency. It's clear that a coordinated international response is essential to stop these outbreaks and save lives. A public health emergency of international concern is the highest level of alarm under international health law. It is possible to vaccinate against Mpox, as happened in previous outbreaks, but these vaccines are not widely available in the DRC, where these children had to rely on their immune systems. The w and it's really important to pay attention that there's no treatment. There's no treatment. You just got to let this thing go through. You can, you can uh, treat some of the symptoms, but you're not really treating the virus. All right, there's no treatment for it. So, you know, it's a problem. It's really a problem, all right? Please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. I have structural nano silver soaps. These will neutralize pathogens, right? And in addition, it's a very high quality soap. I have five different varieties on my store. This one happens to be lemongrass, but uh, I also have peppermint and oatmeal spice and charcoal. So please go to the store, get a couple bars for your household. It's a very high quality soap. It's a lot better than Dove. All right, so please go to the store and get the structural nano silver soap. I have a skincare bar, all right? A multi-purpose bar. It's called the Even Better Bar, all right? I partnered up with Rainbow Herbals and we created these different bars deodorants and, and skincare bars. This skincare bar you can put on your skin every day and it'll help to soften your skin, smooth your skin, and give it a little bit of a glow. All right. You, you can use it every day, all right, on your skin. In addition, it will help to heal a wound. So if you have a cut, an abrasion, or a minor burn, it'll help to heal that. You can apply this on a bug bite, which is going to be important, especially during the whole West Nile issue and the triple E problem with the mosquitoes. So the moment you have a mosquito bite, apply it on the wound so you're not scratching it too much and creating you know, further damage to your skin. It will 
it will eliminate the itch in maybe about 30 seconds or so. So it's a very high quality skin bar, skincare bar. It's made from essential oils from the Himalayas. So please go to the store and, and get this very high quality bar. If you have psoriasis or eczema, you can apply it there to mitigate it. If you have a muscle pain, you can put it on the muscle pain. The muscle pain will be mitigated, if not eliminated, in 60 to, uh, to about 120 seconds. So it, it, this is a very good bar, all right? So please go to the store, get, get a couple bars for your household. So you have them when you need them, all right? That's the whole idea is to be, be prepared. It's a very high quality bar, and you can use it as a skin skincare uh, every day if you don't want to use the structural nanosilver gel as a skincare. In addition, we develop these deodorant bars. The deodorant bars are either in citrus or in peppermint, lavender, and tea tree. These deodorants, all right, are made from essential oils from the Himalayas, very high quality. There's no aluminum, no baking soda, and they're dual purpose. So you use them as a deodorant. It's for males and females, but it also help to detoxify your body. Really important to regularly detoxify your body on top of because of the chemtrails and the bug spraying and the forever chemicals that are in our water and our food, even in our clothing, there are forever chemicals in our clothing. So, you know, what you really need to do is take things that are dual purpose that help to um, mitigate some of the, these toxins. You want to take things that are, that, that help your immune system and help to detoxify your body. This product, will help to detoxify your body on top of it being a deodorant. So please go to the store and get the, the deodorants either in citrus or in peppermint lab or in tea tree. Get a couple bars for your household, it's really important. All right, so let's take a look at This is from Fox 32 Chicago. On the WHO says while MPOX infections are on the rise over the past few weeks, there have been relatively few deaths. The CDC is now chiming in with how to manage the spread in the states. Steve Harrigan has more from Atlanta. <laughs> CDC officials are recommending rapid MPOX testing for patients who've traveled to the Democratic Republic of Congo or its neighboring countries. While those results are pending, patients are urged to isolate. And for health officials, the CDC recommends they follow state and local MPOX reporting requirements. There are two different versions of the, the MPOX virus, CLAID-1 and CLAID-2, but both versions of those virus continue to look like they are spread through very close contacts. The CDC guidelines are for the CLAID-1 variants. Now, CLAID-1 appears to be more severe in terms of seriousness of disease. And usually we have about 10% mortality. Yeah, and then a big part of that reason is the D14 gene being expressed for CLAID-1, all right? because it affects the cascade, all right? The complement cascade. And the World Health Organization has lifted its usual rules for partners to buy MPOX vaccines in a bid to get shots to Africa faster. Some of the vaccines, as Tim said, will arrive in the next few days in the Odyssey. The relief can't come fast enough, as those recovering from MPOX in the DRC are now facing a stigma in their communities for catching the disease. I do know customers don't come to my small business like they used to because they say my children were sick with MPOX, so they're afraid they will contaminate them too. MPOX symptoms include a rash that forms blisters and then crusts over. It is spread through intimate contact and saliva. There have been more than 30,000 cases in the U.S. with more than 50 deaths reported. In Atlanta, impacts can be passed from clothing, from bedding. If you happen to be a worker, let's say in a hotel, and you're a maid, all right, and you're you're working on the room, but the one of the people that were in the hotel were using the bed that happened to, to have have uh, impox you may contract. So 
you got to kind of pay attention. It's not about just intimacy, but it's also about being next to something that, you know, touching something that individual touched. The clothing, you can get impacts through clothing. All right. So, you know, just to pay attention to that. It's like the same way that you could get chicken pox. It's the same way that impacts is transmitted. All right. Now, chicken pox is a herpes virus. So it's a different type, type of virus. But if you remember, you know, most people did get chicken pox. If you remember how easy it is to get, uh, it's the same problem. It is the same problem. It's transmitted the same way. Steve Harrigan, Fox 32, Chicago. Now, um, all right, so let's, uh, this is Reuters. Before I do that, please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the olive leaf extract. Olive leaf extract is important. It's a dual purpose product, all right? This helps to boost up your immune system and also helps your cardiovascular system. How does it work? It brings down inflammation. By bringing down chronic inflammation, what's going to happen is your immune system is going to be boosted up. You're going to have a healthier immune system. In addition, by bringing down the LDL levels and bringing up your HDL levels, you're going to be able to control your lipid profile, which is very important for good cardiovascular health. So please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the olive leaf extract. You're going to need this to help boost up your immune system. So go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the olive leaf extract. Oh, wow. She's been looking for an insight in that data forever. Oh, I'm going to find it. Did you tell her about Sounds Live? No, I thought you did. I'm going to tell her. Oh, no. The quickest way from a billion points of data to a point of view, SAS via. Studying the new MPOC strain that is spread out of the Democratic Republic of Congo, say the virus is changing faster than expected and is often happening in areas where experts do not oh, have the funding or equipment it, to properly Reuters test the virus. Reuters spoke to half a dozen scientists in Reuters the Reuters is just recycling the, that, that coverage. Um, let's see what CGTN Africa has to say. Cases of clade 1B has been rising rapidly. The Democratic Republic of Congo is the country that has been hit the hardest by the Mbox outbreak so far. In the eastern regions of North and South Kivu, almost 5,000 people carry the clade 1B strain. The number of reported cases of clade 1B has been rising rapidly for several weeks. Fortunately, relatively few deaths have been reported in recent weeks. In addition, 258 cases of clade 1B have been confirmed in Burundi, four in Rwanda, four in Uganda, two in Kenya, and one each in Sweden and Thailand. We also remain concerned about outbreaks of clade 1A in other parts of DRC. The strain was first detected in September among sex workers in the DRC's mining town of Kamituga near the border with Rwanda. Experts say the new strain is deadlier than previous ones. The global health body has pledged to speed up the acquisition of vaccines by affected countries as it responds to this new health crisis. WHO is working to accelerate access to and delivery of vaccines. The manufacturers of the two vaccines submitted their applications for emergency use listing last Friday, the 23rd of August, and we're working to review those applications as fast as possible. The safety and efficacy of vaccines are our highest priority. We will not take shortcuts. Earlier this month, the WHO declared the Mbox outbreak a public health emergency. The Mbox health crisis 
comes at a time when the world is struggling to recover from the effects of COVID-19 pandemic, which hit many countries hard from 2020, leaving many of them struggling. Wanja Mungai, CDTN. We have more and more members who are very curious about learning how to get good. Okay, this is going to be an interesting, this is going to be an interesting section here. Major this is going to be a little bit longer. Hey, my name is Dr. Gwen Salido, and I'll be talking about monthly problems today. Okay, so before we do that, this is going to be a longer part segment to the to the video I'm doing here. It's gonna be interesting. We're gonna learn a little bit here. Please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the NAD+. It's important because it helps to boost up your energy levels. It helps to repair DNA. And it is also a compound that helps to protect neurons, all right? So please go to the store, get the NAD+. Plus. You should be taking this every day. Now it's important to realize that West Nile and Triple E, even though it is very low probability of getting, but we're in this mosquito season in the United States in certain areas. And uh, if you do contract it, it's high impact, low probability, but high impact. So you need to take things that are helping to protect your uh, neurons, all right? That's really important because West Nile and Triple E are, uh, can affect the, the nervous system. In addition, uh, the chemicals that we're, we're breathing in from the chemtrails, the chemicals you know, from the spring for the mosquitoes, the everyday forever chemicals that we're exposed to damage our DNA. And the NAD plus helps to help the cells repair that DNA. So NAD plus helps to boost up your energy levels. That's really important, especially when you get older. But as you get older, we also have DNA damage that needs to be repaired. NAD plus helps with that process to repair the DNA. And we are exposed to chemicals in our modern day world and, uh, and they do damage to the DNA. So the NAD plus will help to try to repair some of that damage, All right? And again, NAD plus helps with neuroprotection. Vitamin K2, MK7, really important for bone health, improving your bone health. It's, you take it with D3, and that way you're, you're absorbing calcium and you can remodel your bones. This will help with osteoporosis and, and, and help with the, the joint health. It's synergistic with taking it with collagen. So that, that's a great way to help with your bone health. So taking K2, D3, and collagen is really important for bone health. But it's also K2, MK7 can help with cardiovascular health. And how you do that is you take K2, MK7, which is this bottle that I have. You take it with the C60 that I have on my store, which brings down free radicals. You take it with turmeric and ashwagandha, which brings down inflammation. It controls the blood glucose levels with ashwagandha. And you take natokinase and omega-3 to help to bring down your LDL levels, all right, and bring up your HDL levels. So you're improving your, your lipid profile. When you do all that, you're going to improve your cardiovascular health. You're going to reduce the new plaque buildup, but you're also going to be, over time, taking the plaque buildup that you do have, and it's going to start with, it'll start to diminish that plaque. That means your blood pressures are gonna be better. So it's really important to take vitamin K2, MK7 for bone health and for cardiovascular health. I just told you how to use it in a stack for cardiovascular health. So please go to the store and get my MK, uh, uh, please get, go to my store and get the vitamin K2 and K7. It's a new product that I have. I've been taking K2 for a long time. I've now been able to get it on my store and provide you a high quality K2 and K7. And I told you how to stack it.
to improve your bone health and your, your uh, artery health. The presentation is entitled Monkeypox Wag Matapo. Pox Wag Matapo. These are my disclosures. So what is monkeypox? Monkeypox is from a virus, again, you know, another virus. It's a zoonotic disease, meaning it can be transmitted from animals to people. Now, it's usually found in Africa, mostly around the tropical rainforest regions. Now. And it's characterized by fever and rash. Now. Uh, although there are many other presentations that I will show you in a bit. So the range of illness can be from asymptomatic, but can go as far as death. So here we see, we mentioned that it is a zoonotic disease. So they are infections that are transmitted from animals. Now these are some of the animals that can transmit to humans. And most newly discovered infections really come from animals. Uh, now most re-emerging human pathogens are also zoonoses. And here are uh, more specifically the animals associated with monkeypox. So let's look at some of the examples. No? Um, the African dormouse, dorm rope squirrel, and then the Suti manami of Waito, um, and then the Gambian pouch rat, no? and of course other animal species. And these animals can transmit to the human. But there are many other factors, no? and both environmental and social factors that cause emergence. No? Kasi dati naman na to sa, sa Africa, kaya lang, bakit nag-emerge? No? Bakit biglang uh, kumakalit sa ibang countries? No? So kung titignan natin, deforestation, no? usually kasi yung mga animals are hidden in the forest, but that's their natural habitat. Ngayon, when we do, um, you know, when we cut the trees, no? Siyempre, mawawala ng tirahan yung mga animals and they will move out of their, their usual comfort zone. And sometimes, that leads them to places where the humans are. And that puts humans at risk for infection. No? Ngayon, civil unrest and poverty. No? So ito naman, yung problema is nagkakaroon ng, uh, you know, pro problems sa uh, population sa community ng humans. No? So the humans are the ones that uh, travel from their from their uh, areas of residence, no? and then some of them will will move to the jungles, no? and then they will be exposed to animals that get infected. No? Same with climate change, no? So the natural environment is supposed to be green, and of course, uh, uh, moist with water, etc. But if uh, it becomes dry, and you know the the trees die, the grass drive, uh, the, there is again um, death of the, you know, the, the habitat of animals. Then animals will move somewhere else and then that, they, that puts them at a higher chance of encountering humans and transmitting the virus to humans. No? Uh, and then, of course, the di ba, smallpox na wala na na eradicate. Of course, smallpox vaccination ended. No? And uh, that is uh, contributory to the, the occasional emergence of monkeypox. Now, here are this is another, this is Africa. No? This is uh, Central Africa and Western Africa, as you can see. Now, if the orange part are those the locally acquired, no? it's endemic as Africa. So uh, these are the areas that, like, that uh, um, have locally acquired. Confirm human monkeypox cases in so Congo, Central African Republic, Gabon, Cameroon, Nigeria, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Now, you imported no, yung purple, so Benin, and South Sudan. But this is the usual area of uh, monkeypox. And this is a bigger map no, showing the, again, the locally acquired and imported cases. No? Okay. But look, imported cases, United States, United Kingdom, Israel, no? and even Singapore. No? So that's from 1970 to 2021. So endemic usually in Africa, but you know, from time to time it can, can go to other areas. So this graph um, shows, 
the number of confirmed monkeypox cases worldwide here at the left. As you can see, sporadically, meron mga konti konti and depends on some are in West Africa and then some in Central Africa and then imported. And then around 2017, 18, 19, and 20, measure mga mostly from West Africa and Central Africa. And here on the right, although I'm covering it a little bit with my face, the number of suspected monkey monkeypox cases in the Democratic Republic of Congo, as you can see, from the 90s, no? Pataas ng pataas, no? And here you see the NPAM, matataas. So, tumataas na rin kaso ng monkeypox cases. Okay, another map showing the geographical distribution of confirmed no? cases and suspected cases of monkeypox in none in that year. So, so, you know, we can have a lot of people in the Including Australia, UAE. There's a lot of feedback. There's a lot of noise in his video. So, hopefully, it, you can hear it as well. It's growing uh, to non endemic countries, unfortunately. So this this slide shows on the left no, the cases of monkeypox in non-endemic countries from May 13 to 26. No? You know, so let's just look at the confirmed uh, cases of pinakamarami, pinakamarami para sa uh, United Kingdom, the UK 106, no? followed by Portugal 49, followed by Canada. No? So you, you know, but there are many countries. No? And here on the on the left, on the I'm right, gonna stop this. I'm gonna stop box. this play because there's too much background noise going on with with, with the video. Let me see if I can find an, uh, another another video here that might be of, of good uh, content for Impox. Impox. It, it's a good video. It's just that he has a lot of background noise in the laboratory, and it just. It, Hard to record off of that. Um, let's see if I can find something here this week. It's the news conference. A year ago, I mean, a lot of this stuff is like a year ago or two years ago. Um, yeah, unfortunately, his recording is not that great. All right, all right. Please go to my store, love studio rickvic.com and get the NAC. This is really important to take every day. It is a strong antioxidant. It'll bring up your glutathione levels. It helps to neutralize those free radicals in a different way compared to C60. It also helps with uh, mood and you know mental health, which is really important. And it's a, it, and again, it's a strong antioxidant. So please go to my store and get the NAC. This is borrowing from the whole idea of lessons learned from longevity and anti-aging subculture and, 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 and how to build up these stacks to, to improve your fitness and slow down the aging process. So NAC is really important because it brings up the glutathione levels. Glutathione is a strong antioxidant and this is synergistic with C60 and it'll also help to maintain mental health. Now, since we're talking about C60, C60 is a strong antioxidant and I have it in three different configurations, all right? I have it in a two ounce, a four ounce, and an eight ounce configuration. The higher the ounce, the cheaper it is per ounce for you, so. Um, and I also have it in extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, or avocado oil. 
all right? It's in an oil because C60 molecule is lipid soluble. So it has to be dissolved in a lipid, in, in an oil. You take a teaspoon of it a day, take it every day. And what that does is that it will neutralize those free radicals. This is synergistic with the NAC, all right? Why? Because this will boost up the glutathione levels and neutralize free radicals. And it's an antioxidant, all right? And it also helps with detoxifying the body. This will neutralize those free radicals with the C60 molecule. And it's very potent. And you, you take it every day. And what you'll notice is that you're going to have less cellular stress. Your ATP is going to start to go up because your mitochondrial health will be improved. Your neurons will fire faster because it's it has more... Uh, healthier mitochondria, and it's producing those neurotransmitters. So you're going to be thinking better. You're going to think faster. You're going to have better memory. You're going to have more energy. When you have more energy, you're going to have a better immune system. If you have less cellular stress, your cells are going to perform better. Your tissues are going to perform better. Your organs are going to perform better. So it's really important to take antioxidants because as we get older, we're building up more and more of those free radicals. So you got to soak those up. That's why it's so important to take the NAC every day and take the C60 every day, all right? Take a teaspoon of this every day. I have it in extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, and avocado oil. So please go to the store and get the C60 in a two ounce, a four ounce, or an eight ounce configuration. I also have natokinase, which helps to dissolve clots because it's fibronolytic. If you take natokinase in higher doses, It'll also bring down LDL levels and, and increase your HDL levels. This helps to improve your lipid profile. It helps to improve your cholesterol level. By doing that and you maintain good cardiovascular health and fitness, you won't have to be on a statin. So please follow my advice. Go to my store, take the natto kinase that I provide every day to help to improve your cardiovascular fitness. Ubiquinol is the active form for CoQ10. CoQ10 is an antioxidant. It also helps with boosting up your energy levels, and it helps to improve the health of your neurons. So please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. It's the-studio-reykjavik.com. Get the Ubiquinol. Take it every day. It's important. I've been taking CoQ10 for a long, long time. And I now can get provided on my store for you to add to your stack. Uh, CoQ10 is really important for neural health and the mitochondrial health and boosting up those energy levels. It's an antioxidant. So please go to my store. It's synergistic with C60. It's attacking the problem in a different way. It's also synergistic with the NAC. If you notice what I keep on telling you what to do, like, like ubiquinol is synergistic with NAC also. All right, glutathione levels go up, all right? And that's an antioxidant. The CoQ10 helps with your neurons and, and helps to boost up your energy levels, all right? And it helps with the mitochondrial health. Same thing with the C60. It soaks up those free radicals and helps with the, the mitochondrial health. So they're all synergistic, but they're attacking it from a different direction. Right? So please go to the store and get the ubiquinol. It's the active form for CoQ10. I've been taking ubiquinol for many, many years. And you know what, what's really important here is to add it to your stack, all right? And as I can provide more compounds, more supplements to the store, you'll be able to, to fully mimic what I do, all right? Because I take a lot of stuff, all right? But um, with that, uh, I think I'm going to stop this video for, for MPOX. I apologize for the quality of the video that I was trying to play earlier. The, the background in his laboratory is, is too much and it's not good for the recording. Please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. It's important to understand that if MPOX gets, becomes an outbreak in a developed nation, which it has not yet, this clade one B, if it does, we don't have cross, we don't have enough cross-reactive antibodies at the population level 
to be able to mitigate it. And it's going to be a problem. All right. So how do you, uh, you know, how do you take charge of your health? You need to boost up your immune system. I've told you a thousand times what you need to do to boost up your immune system. You need to be putting stuff like structural nano silver gel on your skin to create a barrier. All right. And you need to, you know, you know, realize that you can you know, touch a surface and get pox. All right. Um, it's not just the person. You know, don't believe that's just the person. It's not. It's also surfaces that have touched, you know, a, a pox lesions. So, you know, especially bedding or clothing or whatever. So please pay attention to that, to that, to that, um, you know, to that fact. Please go to my store, the-studio-reykvik.com. Thank you for listening. Please share my videos and ask for your social media to follow me. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.